Hello YouTube, this is your goalie from That's in the Never, and welcome to the first part of my tutorial tutorial series of making the 3D printer that I showcased uh, some time ago. Uh, so, uh, before I begin, I would like to apologize beforehand. Um, it's a big complex creation, so I might mess up some stuff and have to redo it, so just keep that in mind. But let's get going. So, first we want to create what the control part controls, what are the saving mechanism, I guess. It's what controls what part of the memory, which we're going to build later, we're saving to. And if you want to see this part, you can just find the um, tutorial video, and you can look it up there. So, what we need is we need a few torches up here that we can turn off as kind of display thingy and we need three buttons down below so uh, let's just start by building a wall here I'm gonna you I'm probably gonna use this throughout the video I have single player commands installed so if you're wondering what this is this is just some kind of world edit tool let me just get this working there we go Just so I don't have to actually build that entire wall. It doesn't work 100%, as you can tell. But at least it gets the job done and helps me build stuff faster. And again, this is, or this was, single player commands. Okay. So let's start off by some buttons. We're going to need a reset button to reset our counter, which counts what memory we're saving to. So let's have a reset button. We also need a next bit button and an actual save button. So we're not going to worry about this save button for now, we're just going to worry about these two here and getting those to work. And also, uh, let me do like that, we need something up here, uh, wait, how, how high up is that? I have a picture down here below my screen I can look at, so let me just find out how high up these needs to be. Let's see, one, two, three, four, I think it's five. I'm gonna go with five. So, one, two, three, four, five, so up here. We need three lights here, which are going to indicate the first bit, second bit, and third bit. So let's just add some things here to the back, so they are working. We're gonna do like this. Place some torches, some redstone. So now these are turned off, but when I'm at a certain bit, this, like if I'm at the second bit, this thing's gonna get power and that torch is gonna turn on. But we're all gonna worry about all that stuff later. So, uh, let me just check on the, yep. So I'm gonna get a button, hook that up. Duke, duke. So let's go around to the back. So the counter that I'm using for this redstone design, uh, it's not one that I've created. Uh, as far oh wait, what do we have a problem here. It seems let me just okay. We actually need to get this down. So oh yeah, I know. Just do it like that. This counter is based on a um, from a guy I think. Oh, what was it? it was O C. D, I believe. Don't count me on that. Uh, but he created a redstone counter. I don't know if he actually created it. I think he did, but I'm not sure. But nonetheless, it's a counter that works on, or works with pistons. So we're going to make this part here. I'm going to explain how it works, how it functions more exactly when I've got this done. It's pretty complex I guess so we gonna we want to place the pistons down here with one space in between I'm gonna add a one delay in all of them I could just do it like this but I should have fun so I'm going to add some repeaters up here on three ticks so just carve out this is one two three so click on it place it and click two times uh yes so now we want to hook this thing here up to this over here. Actually, we want to hook it up with a torch on the back because we want this to be turned on. 
So now we just need to connect it. Uh, let me do it like that. And that. Boom. So now the counter is actually done. This this is going to work. Um, if we go over here and click the next bit button. Uh, okay, we made a mistake. So let's just reset. It's probably something with the timing. Uh, let me just check. It's probably this thing that needs to be fixed a little bit. Because it needs to just emit a very, very short pulse. So here we go. So I'm just explain it by going here and turning these off. So what happens is right now the piston is retracted. And this here is just giving power to dead air. But if it extends, like so, it moves up here. So now this piece of redstone here, this group here, can give power through it. Since there's no block, it's like if I did this here, it's able to give power through a block. So that goes to this group here and then goes to air for now. But it also gives power to this block, which then transfers it not only that way, but also down here to this part of the piston. So what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to keep the piston extended even though this power here turns off. So it kind of saves, okay, this thing was on. Uh, let me just check. I think I can do the same thing here. Okay, no, I can't. It has to be something with the blocks and stuff. I think it's a glitch that he either discovered or found someone else who had made that. But nonetheless, it's a very, it's a pretty cool um, creation that he's made here. So let me just get the sand back in place. And we can click the reset button, test it works. So you can see it resets like it's supposed to. So what we're also going to do is we're going to hook up the reset button. So when we click the reset like if we're at the last bit here, it resets the counter, but also gets it back to the first bit. So we don't have to click that again. Um, so let me bring this underground real quick. I'm gonna hook this up through some torches to this thing. So we're just gonna move all the stone. I don't know how much space we're actually gonna use, but it doesn't matter. So let's just right now get that inverted get over here. And then we want it to go into a block here, which is going to have that and have that. See, they just gave a short pulse. Let me just turn, reset it. So now we're going to add some delays. I think this should do. I think actually this is going to do. So we can test it by clicking the reset and see if it makes the first bit reappear. Yep, there we go. So right after it's reset, it pops up the first bit again. So now we're going to take this, uh, now we're going to get an output from the, oh, God damn it, this thing here. So we need, I'm just going to use different colors because it looks pretty. Um, let me see, I think this one. So. We're gonna take an output here, and the way we can do that is because we have because the power. Wait a minute. There we go. The power can not only go through the block to this other repeater; it can also go this way onto this redstone. So if this bit is turned on, let me just actually do that. Ah, I can do it over here. So that bit is turned on. See that? What the hell? Oh, wait a minute. Something's not right here. <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot. We already have it up there, so we just need to do like that. There we go. So now it works. So you can see it gives power over here to all of these, since now it's that bit. So if we try and reset it, turns all of them off, turns the first one on again. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this into a decoder, because we need to decode this into, or, uh, we need, this is like an encoded signal, so we need to decode it into something that we can use. And instead of having this bit being on all the time, we only want this to be on when we're, these are not on. Because right now, if this thing turns on, if that if these two turn on, they're all on at the same time. And that's not what we want. We want one of them to give out an output. 
at any given time. So we're just going to make a small decoder based off what I think is my design. This is one that I find that you could use. So I'm going to do it like that. Put some torches here. So now, uh, wait, let me just finish this first line, then it's easier to explain. So, there we go. Some stuff there. Uh, let me check. That should be good. And, yes. No, not quite. We need spit threats in that. So right now, this here is on. So that's giving power to this torch, turning it off, turning this line off, turning this torch on, which means this is the bit selected. But if I go and press the next bit button, so I'm gonna click, now this line is on because this here is turning that off, turning that on, turning this on, turning this off. So now this would not be the line that's selected right now. But if we add, uh, god damn it, add some more stuff over here, press on top, do -do 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 -do. And duk duk. If we do like so, you can see this is now the line selected since this is emitting power. And if we do the same thing over here, this one over here will not emit power since it's not the line or the bit that we have selected. You can see that's off. So now this is on, that's the one selected. But if I just quickly pulse, now that one's on. And if I click the reset, They're all going to turn off, and the first one's going to turn on again. So, boom, there you go. So now what we want to do is we want to hook up these things to this. So this here is going to be the first bit, because normally you read from left to right, unless you're Japanese and you read that way. But I'm going to assume you're not Japanese, read this way. So this will be the first bit, second bit, and third bit. I'm actually going to color this the way we're going to use it afterwards or later. Um... I'm going to try and keep the colors separated, or different things separated by color. Since it's a lot nicer and a lot easier to figure out what the hell is going on. So now we've got that. We're going to connect. We need to correct connect this one. This here would be the first bit. That's red. Next is yellow. This one's green. Oops. God damn it. There we go. So we want to connect the red one here, the red output, up to this thing. So let's just simply take it over here. And uh, I think I'm going to do this one at the same time. Might as well. And this one here is going to be a little bit tricky because we need to... We can actually just do like that. That's going to work as well. We need to keep it up so it's not touched by any of this. It will affect it in some way. So, if we do like so, uh, nope, no touching. That is wrong. Uh, actually, we need to keep it up here. So, we can take it over here, because this is the green, so the green bit indicator needs to go to the green output, or this thing. This is going to work just as well. So, we can go like that, and connect it. Uh, actually, we need to, we don't need that inverter, because... The signal is already inverted. So we just need a simple repeater, and now that counter is going to turn off because that's not the one selected. So let's add the other one. The next one, I guess. So get that here. Doo -doo -doo. Um, God, this is tough. Hard work, tight workspace. Damn. So add a repeater, try and keep it the same delay. This looks nice. Get it over around. Go away. It's actually interfering. Oh, yes. Right now we have it interfering with this torch down here, so we need to quickly fix that. Just adding a simple, just lifting this up one bit here. There we go. Let me just pick up the button. Uh, where, there it is. So now that one's connected. That one's not selected either, so that's off. This one's on right now, but this is, um, it's what it's supposed to do, but. Just connect it. Uh, do do do. Need to get up and around. 
down to here. As you can see, it looks very nice with these colors and everything. Makes it look pretty, which is always a good thing. So add one repeater to make sure it gets there. There we go. So now we have the bit select thingy done. So if we click this button, it's going to change to the next bit. Change to the next one. Click it again. It won't do anything. It won't reset by itself. But if we click this thing, it's going to reset. Enable the first one. I think we can actually t fine tune the delay here a little bit. So we can do like that. And it's probably still going to. Wait, let me actually try like this. You can spend some time and fine tune it. So it's quicker. You see now it's a lot quicker. Um. Let me just try like that. You see, it still works nicely. I'll we'll probably remove that and even turn this down a little bit. Just do it bit by bit until it suddenly doesn't work anymore. The quicker it is, the better, because you're going to use less time actually programming the 3D printer to do what you want to. You see, now it didn't turn on, so that was a tiny, tiny bit too fast. So here's the sweet spot. It's going to enable it as quickly as it can. And that is one full and one on three ticks. So that is one, two, three. So there we go. We've got that part of the thing done. Let me see what else do we want to build. Uh, do, 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 do. I think this is actually what's going to be it for now. I'm probably... Um, now this is, this is going to be it for now. This I think this is enough for this tutorial. So, uh, wait, wait. That's weird. Alright. Uh, but yeah, I think this is enough for the first tutorial. So, thank you for watching, and remember to stay tuned for the other parts of the tutorial. And again, if you want to check out the printer, you can just look back at my videos and find the 3D printer showcase. You can find out what it actually is I'm building. I'm going to show you how to build um, but yeah, this is going to be a long tutorial series, so bear with me. It's a very big creation. I'm going to try and cut it down to as few parts as I can without making them too long and too complicated. So this is just going to be the first one. We've made the counter, which is ready for, which we're going to use for the actual saving. We, when we want to save to our memory, which is going to be somewhere over there in separate towers. So thank you for watching, and take care.